Welcome to this public meeting for the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, we're considering a staff draft fiscal year 2023 operating plan. Before I begin, can I confirm all the commissioners are here? Commissioner Feldman? I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioner Boyle? I am here. Good morning, everyone. So, this operating plan lays out our plans for our priorities and pro uh, projects over the fiscal year that began earlier this month. It's a tricky plan, plan to write, and I want to thank staff for all their work. The plan itself considers two scenarios. First, a scenario in which the agency operates all year long under a continuing resolution and does not receive any additional funds from Congress above that level. And the second, a scenario in which we receive an approximately 40% increase in our appropriations per the President's budget request. My sincere hope is that we'll be funded at the President's budget request level. There's so much safety work that can be done to improve um, our world. Nevertheless, I recognize the need for the Commission to put forth a clear plan to guide the work of the agency at a lower level pending our final appropriations. The core of the plan where we put down firm deadlines for ourselves is at the continuing resolution level of just $139 million total. I'm pleased that the staff has sent us an ambitious plan given the limited funding. And I look forward to discussion today at finalizing our operating plans. We're going to start with any questions for the staff. We have several staff members present in the event there are questions. With us, with us are Jason Levine. The CPSC Executive Director, James Baker, our Chief Financial Officer, also in attendance, Pamela Springs, Director of Office of Communications, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes for questions, uh, and after questions are complete, we'll consider any amendments. So I personally don't have any questions. I turn to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Feldman if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no questions. Commissioner Trumka. Just have a thank you. Um, we threw a lot of questions at staff over the last week, two weeks um, that we got quick answers and very thoughtful answers back and, and creative answers. So thank you for all of that. And, and I'm left with no questions today. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I certainly echo Commissioner Trumka's sentiments there. I have no questions either. Thank you, Commissioner. Hearing no further questions or no questions, staff is excused and we'll begin consideration of the package that's before us. We're going to now entertain any amendments to the draft fiscal year 2023 operating plan. We can go in order of seniority and recognize uh, a sponsoring commissioner to introduce our amendment for up to three minutes. I'd like to start by recognizing myself to offer a manager's amendment that incorporates the amendments from various commissioners that I believe we have agreement on. And I want to thank my colleagues for collaborating and pulling together this manager's package that includes 19 separate amendments originally proposed by Commissioners Feldman, Trumka, and Boyle. And I really want to let them talk about the details of taking together this package makes our ambitious operating plan even stronger and more aggressive. It will stretch our staff's resources to the limit and perhaps a little bit beyond, but I think it's healthy to be able to be uh, out there and aggressive. So thanks to, to all the commissioners. And I ask for a second on the amendment. Second. Second. Hearing a second, I will now move to consideration of the amendment and have the other commissioners. I welcome them to speak upon uh, the, the manager's amendment. So turning to Commissioner Feldman first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased that we were able to work together uh, so closely to compile a sizable manager's uh, amendment today. It includes a number of my priorities, including my amendment to focus attention on closing out uh, open GAO recommendations. Uh, much like the inspector general, the general account uh, government accountability office is the conscious of the commission for uh, Congress and commissioners and, and most importantly for American consumers. Uh, I was pleased to see uh, staff proposed into the base text. Uh, 1 of my amendments from last year. Uh, that required this for the inspector general's in, uh, recommendations. Uh, my amendment uh, that's included in the managers would add the same requirement for GAO recommendations. And I believe that uh, this periodic reporting has improved compliance with our IG's recommendations and keeping attention on uh, on those recommendations. Uh, frankly, it's, it's led to results. Uh, it's important uh, for us to ensure that these recommendations are implemented. And, and if not, 
uh, to have a, a reasonable explanation for, for why not. So to that end, my amendment would add GAO's recommendations to what we're already doing uh, for IGs. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Um, the manager's package also includes my amendment to publicize seizures and enforcement activity. Uh, because of amendments that I've uh, introduced into previous operating plans, we've done uh, uh, a lot of work to grow our in import inspection teams uh, significantly. And, and frankly, I think we can all agree that they're doing great work. Uh, publicizing those efforts are going to go a long way to showing the American people uh, that these uh, that results are occurring uh, and frankly, to demonstrate uh, what we're doing on a day to day basis to keep them safe. Uh, another of my amendments that's included uh, is Feldman 4. Uh, which would further build out our compliance team uh, when additional monies become available. Uh, and since I came to the commission, I've, I've argued for increasing funding for our compliance team. And, and frankly, uh, uh, we've been successful in, in growing it. Uh, this would add on that, uh, that momentum. I think our compliance staff is at the forefront of uh, that we do. And we need to ensure that this team has the resources uh, to investigate and, and where appropriate uh, to, 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 to litigate uh, cases bring changes and uh, we can easily look to other independent agencies uh, uh, to learn that this happens all the time. And it's my hope, frankly, that CPSC follows suit in that regards, uh, pun intended. So thank you. I think that this is a, a, a strong managers and I look forward to supporting it. Thank you, Commissioner. Turn to Commissioner Trumka. Thank you. I, I echo that sentiment. I think it's incredible that we've reached consensus on so many pressing issues. And it's a testament to the creative vision flowing from this commission right now. Uh, and these changes are going to move safety forward innumerably. I'd like to thank my fellow commissioners for accepting many of my amendments into this package. Of those, we've agreed to move forward on rulemaking for uh, fire hazards and side by sides. We'll now finalize a rule on portable generator CO risk. It's time to end that avoidable CO poisoning risk now. We're significantly raising the bar on recall effectiveness rate. We're already doing great work there, and we need to continue to raise the bar there. And, and we're also raising that bar on success in voluntary standards and, and making tangible safety improvements the focus of our activity in that space. And we will evaluate 100% of civil penalty cases or criminal referral to the Department of Justice. There's no bigger deterrent to bad acts than that threat of prison time. I also appreciate uh, the Commissioner Feldman amendments that are included to highlight enforcement activity and strengthen the enforcement staffing. And I appreciate Commissioner Boyle, the amendments that you're about to outline, um, but, but hitting a few of the points that, that I really appreciate from those. Um, I really appreciate that you're gonna be uh, improving incident data collection from underserved communities, working on the gender disparities and, and researching that in incidents so that we can appropriately consider them in our policy making that you're pushing us forward on PFAS and battery ingestion, and that you're helping us rethink our communication strategies and improving our uh, message delivery to underserved communities. This package of amendments takes a very strong operating plan and makes it even stronger, and, and I'm very proud to support them. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I too um, am pleased to vote in favor of the amendment and I'm grateful to my colleagues for supporting many of the ideas and projects which I advocated for and are included in this final amendment. I appreciate the care that staff took in preparing this draft and I think the amendments make a strong document stronger. I think our priorities should be clear to the American public uh, and understandable. And I, in my view, uh, the ideas embodied in this amendment do just that. I don't know, Commissioner Trump, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I just highlighted a couple of the ideas that are included here, but I, I will repeat them uh, 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 hopefully quickly uh, and to highlight some of the priorities uh, that are reflected, uh, my priorities that are reflect, reflected in the amendment. Uh, the need for progress on NICE modernization, along with the Commission's commitment to equity, work on older consumer safety hazards, particularly uh, focusing on risks uh, that carry a disparate impact with respect to gender, and the inclusion of PFAS and chronic hazards as an agency priority. 
In addition to those, the amendment before us reflects my priority that we engage with stakeholders on battery ingestion. Uh, this would build on the work on the NPR and final rule related to warning labels and packaging uh, that has been directed by Congress. It also captures the importance of civil penalty work as an agency priority, and it promotes efforts uh, at safety equity through dialogues with underserved communities. Finally, it, it directs staff to take stock of agency communications, of the, in, particularly in light of the impact of um, current uh, of changes uh, as a result of the Safe Sleep with Babies Act, our infant sleep rule, and, and our CS rule, among others. Again, I think this is a robust amendment. Uh, I'm grateful to my colleagues, grateful to staff, uh, and I'm proud to support it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Boyle. You know, I think my colleagues have said it better than I can. I think they've pointed out a number of the ways that the amendments will improve the operating plan. So I thank them for their their thoughts, their input, and um, glad that everyone is able to get together to uh, to move this uh, management amendment forward. Uh, there being no further questions or comments on this amendment, um, I'm going to ask for the votes on the amendment. So, Commissioner Feldman, I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. The yes is at four. The no's are zero. The amendment uh, uh, from the chair is adopted. Now turning to other amendments um, going in order of seniority. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, do you have amendments? I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, uh, like to propose the call up of Feldman 2 regarding CNPPA enforcement. Called up and you can describe it. Uh, great. So this amendment, uh, COPF 2, uh, would maintain uh, enforcement of the Child Nicotine Poisoning Prevention Act uh, as an agency enforcement priority. Liquid nicotine, as I think we all know, is a highly toxic substance, especially when it's ingested or absorbed through the skin. And it causes serious and even deadly consequences uh, uh, for children. This is a longstanding priority, not only of uh, the commission, but also of Congress. Uh, this is also an amendment that I've, I've offered previously, so it, it should be uh, familiar to everybody that's paying attention. Uh, I've socialized this amendment with agency staff who have no objections. And accordingly, I, I would welcome the support of my colleagues and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, is there a second for the? Amendment. Second. I said. Thank you. Um, that moving to questions and comments on the amendment. I recognize myself first and uh, Commissioner Feldman. I, I thank you for this amendment. I understand and appreciate your focus on the enforcement of this law. You know, I, while I understand the compliance with the law is high, um, that there is a less need for the uh, focus enforcement. Do see the value of continuing on uh, being able to ensure that this will be enforced. So um, I will support this amendment going forward. Um, Commissioner Trumka, did you have questions or comments? Uh, I, I do, and thank you, Commissioner Feldman, for the amendment. I know that this has been an important issue for you for quite some time. Um, I've also worked extensively on nicotine hazards. For for me, mainly, it's on the harms caused by children using them as intended. But it's it's certainly beyond question that nicotine is toxic and can be fatal when ingested, as you pointed out. I had to think through this one a little bit more. I I can't really look at this space without thinking about what what FDA has done and not done in this space and how that affects us. Um, and that agency has really failed to protect America from e-cigarettes. It's it's prolonged inaction there has allowed the youth nicotine epidemic to spring forth and allows it to continue. And I think. Part of FDA's timidity in this space is that it's avoided regulating big tobacco companies. Instead, it went after low hanging fruit with its e-cigarette regulation, small manufacturers and vape shops, and it largely put them out of business. And it did that all while letting the big companies keep selling. I hate that approach, but I believe that one unintended consequence of FDA's timid approach is that it should have largely ended the, the liquid nicotine ingestion risk. Uh, because as I understand it, the packaging problems existed among the small manufacturers and vape shops that mix their own flavors. And now only the big tobacco companies are still in business. Yes, they peddle poison, but they seem to securely package it. And the only access to liquid nicotine issue that I'm aware of um, uh, among the major manufacturers was with Juul several years ago. And, and though they were barred from re-engineering their product without FDA approval, 
they illegally did that anyway, and they, they engineered it to fix the leak. Um, that said, those are my assumptions, and, and, and there are very few industries as disdainful of safety as big tobacco. So I don't have any reason to suspect or believe that they're going to continue to properly package the e-liquid if they're left unchecked. And for that reason, I support this amendment. Um, but I think I'd like an update from staff in the near future on what they're finding and, and their assessment of our continuing need in the space going forward. But but I'm happy to support this and uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Um, normally we run through all three and then we come back to you to be able to respond to all of the comments. Um, I'm happy to cede my time. Uh, I don't have a lot to say. So if, if uh, Commissioner Feldman wishes to engage now, I, I don't have an objection to that. I appreciate that, Commissioner. As, as uh, I think all of you uh, recognize, this is an issue that, that I do track closely. And I've seen uh, non-compliant liquid nicotine containers uh, for sale within about a mile radius of here at, at Bethesda Towers. So I have not seen evidence that this is a problem that, that's been solved. Uh, this is not something that, that CPSC identified on its own. Uh, Congress passed the bipartisan uh, CNPPA and, and frankly expects us to uh, continue to enforce it. Uh, and to the point about uh, uh, you know, th this issue being largely, largely resolved uh, through the hands of big tobacco, uh, at, at the end of, as of the end of last month, which coincides with the end of the fiscal year, uh, which is why we're all meeting to, to uh, uh, vote on this plan, uh, poison control centers in the United States uh, managed 4,787 uh, exposure uh, cases involving e-cigarette devices and liquid nicotine ingestions in 2022 alone. So given those numbers, I, I don't believe that this problem's been solved, uh, not even close, and there's no reason that, that I see that to strike it as a, a, a CPSC enforcement priority. So uh, uh, Commissioner Trump, I certainly welcome your support. Uh, I, I don't believe the issue solved, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that uh, that that this is something that that hopefully we can come to some consensus on uh, to uh, agree to maintain that focus. Uh, with that, uh, I'm happy to uh, yield back and hear other questions. Yielding back to Commissioner Boyle's time, I don't know, Commissioner Boyle, did you have additional? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I fully support the amendment. I think it should, we should uh, enforce the statute, and so I don't have other comments other than to echo my colleagues. So I uh, will leave it there. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, at this point in time, I'd normally go back to you, Commissioner Feldman, but I don't know if you have any other comments that. I don't. Make. I appreciate um, the the consideration of my colleagues on this amendment. Um. Hearing no other comments or questions, going to move to a vote. Uh, go to a vote on the uh, amendment, uh, Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Tromka. Yes. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. And I vote yes as well. There are four yeses. The amendment of uh, uh, Feldman two is adopted. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, did you have other amendments? I do have other amendments. Um, I, I would like to uh, now address uh, Feldman five having to do with competition coordination. Okay, please uh, introduce it. Uh, so this amendment is designed to protect American consumers uh, and to ensure that uh, the safety regulations that we promulgate uh, or the voluntary uh, 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 safety standards uh, that in which we participate don't unintentionally harm consumers by granting monopolies. Uh, for years, we've had a requirement uh, on the books uh, that CPSC avoid anti-competitive effects or restraints of trade uh, in standards development, uh, not to mention uh, a federal law that has existed for over a, a century that prohibits uh, monopolies. So th this is something that we should protect against, uh, not only the voluntary standards arena uh, as, it's, as it's currently required, but also with, uh, with mandatory standards that we might consider from time to time. Uh, I expressed concerns previously about how CPSC is meeting our requirement to avoid anti-competitive effects. Uh, this amendment, uh, Feldman 5, would uh, require consultation with our sister agencies who specialize in antitrust uh, to help us develop best practices uh, to, to protect consumers. I would uh, welcome the support of my colleagues and stand ready to answer any questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second for the motion uh, for the amendment? Second. Thank you. Uh, having heard a second, we're going to turn to comments and questions uh, from the other commissioners. I recognize myself. 
uh, first for five minutes. Um, uh, and again, thank you, Commissioner Feldman, for bringing this issue to our attention, proposing the amendment. I know this has been an issue that you have uh, focused on and cared about. You know, the consumer product safety standards um, are primarily focused, and we primarily focus on the safety issues at hand. Uh, but under our rules, we must also consider some of the competition aspects of our actions. Um, I believe that we should be driven by our mission to reduce unreasonable risks of injury and death by consumer products. Um, but interagency coordination and collaboration can help in our decision making process. So, you know, with that, we'll support this amendment, get uh, comments in, and then take that into consideration as required under the rules. But obviously, I think, in my mind, safety is first. Uh, Commissioner Trumka. Thank you. I, you know, as I, as I look at it, our, I think our statute puts far too many burdens on us already that stand in the way of safety regulation. And I don't want to voluntarily add any extraneous steps. So I'm a no on the amendment. Uh, Commissioner Boyle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also will not be supporting this amendment. I think in our discussions with staff at, at the briefing and uh, if throughout the last several weeks, we've been talking a lot about scarce resources. I'm concerned that this uh, amendment directs staff from across the directorates in the agency to devote uh, precious time on non safety work. Uh, and while I uh, understand the impetus for the amendment, and I appreciate Commissioner Feldman's concern on this, I, I can't support it, particularly in light of scarce resources uh, that we are uh, talking about in terms of uh, assigning safety work. So I'm, I'm fortunately cannot support the amendment. Commissioner Feldman, did you have any final comments? I do. In response to uh, my colleague, Commissioner Trumka, I, I would say that this is not an extraneous requirement. It's a requirement that's currently in our uh, CFR regu regulation requirements, uh, and it's designed to protect consumers. Uh, and uh, uh, in response to Commissioner Boyle on the question of resources, uh, frankly, this is an amendment that would not require any significant uh, agency resource. It, it merely requires consultation. Uh, with federal governments, uh, with the, the federal government's antitrust experts, uh, staff has reviewed this amendment, uh, and I've incorporated the suggestions. I have not heard any objections uh, from staff uh, about this being particularly burdensome, uh, or uh, that it would uh, uh, stand in place of other important work uh, that that we are expected to do on behalf of consumers. Uh, and accordingly, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, of staff's concerns that this would impact agency work uh, in in any other areas. Um, I have full confidence in our uh, legal staff and our director of economics uh, to engage in uh, what would likely amount to a series of conversations over the course of a year with uh, folks over at the Federal Trade Commission uh, and the Department of Justice. These are uh, uh, interagency conversations that happen regularly. Uh, so I, I, I truly fail to see how this would be burdensome in any way. Uh, but I take your comments and uh, uh, I, I appreciate them. Thank you. Hearing no other comments uh, at this point in time, I'm going to vote on the amendment. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote. Uh, I believe that was a no. Um, I, I vote no. Commissioner Boyle? Vote no. Uh, and I vote yes. The yeses are two, the noes are two. The amendment from uh, Commissioner Feldman, that's Feldman five, uh, is not adopted. Mr. Feldman, do you have additional amendments? I do, and we're getting towards the end of my list. Not at the end of my list, but uh, but we are making some progress. Uh, I would like to uh, discuss Feldman 6, uh, prohibiting the use of TikTok. Please introduce your amendment. Thank you. So this amendment would continue uh, with some slight modifications uh, to protect important CPSC uh, data uh, and the integrity of our IT systems. Uh, TikTok. Uh, represents a known and credible threat to IT security. Uh, there has been uh, almost universal skepticism across the government as it relates to TikTok uh, and the Chinese-owned uh, uh, parent company ByteDance. I understand the desire to uh, expand our social media presence in order to meet consumers where they are uh, online. However, I, I do uh, believe that allowing a, a hostile foreign actor uh, access to our, our uh, precious uh, systems would be a mistake at this time. Uh, accordingly, I, I would welcome uh, the support of my colleagues on this amendment. And uh, as always, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Is a second for the amendment? 
second the amendment. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Boyle, as well. Uh, having heard a second, um, move to discussion and questions with respect to the amendment. I recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, Commissioner Trumka, oh, sorry, Commissioner Feld, I, uh, I appreciate you bringing this up. Um, it's not an easy issue, as you said. Our social media team has done an incredible job in getting our message out to audiences who might not always want to listen to a federal regulatory agency. And I want our team to stay on the cutting edge. Um, Short-term video should be part of the tools that the CPSC uses, and we really need to go to where consumers are to have our message heard and acted upon. That being said, I, I do recognize that there are real security concerns that have been raised about this company. Uh, their ongoing CFIUS and, uh, investigations regarding TikTok and foreign ownership issues that you mentioned. So we currently don't have a presence on TikTok and comfortable keeping the status quo um, while those investigations are being concluded. But I do think once the CFIUS review is done, we should re-examine this issue. So I am will support the amendment today, but I think it may be coming back up in our mid-year. Uh, Commissioner Chunka. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's tough with social media companies because I, I can't think of one with a clean record on data security or consumer abuses. So if we were using those metrics, we would use none. Um, but I do trust other expert groups in the federal government to assess that to assess that risk. Um, and I'm not sure where the experts that are capable of doing that. And, and Chair Owen Sarek, uh, you referenced some of those ongoing investigations. I'm happy to see what they say. Um, if we're restricted by executive order or anything else from certain uses of a social media company, then I don't think we need this additional restriction. If we're not prohibited from use because the administration has deemed certain uses safe, then we should use it. I mean, I believe in bringing the message to people where they are. And if we want to communicate with young people, that's where they are. So uh, I'm a no on this amendment. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I want to echo what uh, Commissioner Trumka just said about how important communication and education are to our mission of uh, educating and protecting the public. Uh, and I certainly do think caution, uh, though, in this uh, evolving communications world is, is important, um, but I don't actually see the operating plan as the best place to uh, evaluate these issues. Um, I think these are tools uh, that we should defer to staff and that uh, under the direction of the chair. Uh, and so I see supervision of these issues as uh, residing within the authority of the chair. And because the chair is supporting this amendment, uh, I will follow suit. Uh, and uh, also though, I'm open to revisiting these issues as he suggests. So I will be supporting the amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Boyle. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, did you have any final thoughts? I do. Uh, CPSC already has a spotty history on IT security and maintaining data uh, uh, integrity. Uh, in fact, several of our IG recommendations on our most recent data breach uh, remain unimplemented. Uh, at this time, I think the last thing that we should do is uh, uh, move on to a platform that that stands to make us more vulnerable. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the path forward that, that you laid out uh, about revisiting this uh, in, in the future, uh, if and when the foreign ownership uh, issues become resolved uh, and uh, a, a presence on this particular platform uh, gets the uh, a good housekeeping seal of approval from uh, uh, other powers that be within the government that frankly are, are more expert on this uh, in, in terms of uh, the national security and, uh, and, and uh, data integrity impact uh, and, and the risk that this particular platform uh, uh, poses. Uh, so I, I appreciate the feedback of my colleagues and uh, look forward to uh, their support on this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, at this point in time, we will vote on the amendment. Commissioner Feldman? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote no. Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. I vote yes. So three yeses, one no. The amendment uh, Feldman six uh, is adopted. Commissioner uh, Feldman, did you have other amendments? I have one final amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman, and that would be uh, Feldman seven having to do with limitations on uh, non mission critical expenses. Can you introduce it? I'm happy to. Uh, I'm, I'm offering this amendment, uh, which I, I also uh, intend to withdraw, uh, but this amendment uh, is, is, is being offered out of a concern that I have about uh, expenditures that this agency is making 
on non-essential conferences uh, and trainings given uh, the current fiscal environment in which we find ourselves. Uh, given the constrained budget reality that we're all aware of, I think it's important now more than ever uh, to pay close attention to how the agency is expending uh, uh, taxpayer resources. Uh, American consumers uh, rely on us to be uh, judicious uh, stewards of, of these resources. And while conferences uh, and trainings uh, have a place, uh, we, we also need to be careful about how we're spending our, our limited budget. Uh, and uh, I'm aware, and this is based on discussions that uh, that we've had offline in in, uh, in preparation of uh, of the, uh, the amendments for the op plan today, uh, that there is a current direct, uh, directive that's in place that, that covers conference attendance. Uh, I did have the opportunity to review it, and in, in my view, it's a directive that is outdated and frankly doesn't provide the level of accountability uh, and scrutiny that I think the American uh, consumers and American taxpayers uh, deserve here. So, uh, based on uh, assurances that I've received from you, Mr. Chairman, uh, that this directive is under review, uh, I'm comfortable withdrawing the amendment today uh, with the understanding that this is something that we're going to work uh, to ensure uh, responsible uh, expenditures and, and accountability for uh, these types of events uh, and, and expenditures going forward, uh, including in this fiscal year. Uh, so, with that, I, I'm happy to withdraw my amendment. And with that, uh, I believe that exhausts the list of, uh, of Feldman amendments to the fiscal year. 2023 operating plan that we're considering today. So I thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Uh, with regard to your last one, I, mean, I think that commissions, uh, the conferences, um, engaging in public is an important part of the work that we do. We do have a directive with respect to that. I understand that you're reviewing it and happy to have a conversation about it going forward. Um, and it looks like others have comments on that as well, perhaps. Um, I thought Commissioner Trump could raise his hand. I, I did just have one question on that. And, and, you know, I think it was a really prudent idea of the amendment. I appreciated that. I think we do need a little bit more information. And I was going to ask Mr. Chair if we could get that from staff. Um, there were certain dollar thresholds that you had in the amendment. And my curiosity was um, in the last year, how often did we go over those with conference expenses or, or the types of things that would be affected by it? And I think that would give us an idea of, of how to think think through it going forward. So if, if, is that something that we can pull together? I mean, I think the directives and the um, the rules with respect to what we're doing actually apply to all of us. So I would encourage everybody to review those and to make sure that everybody is, is following them and it's compliance consi consistent with what that uh, sure helps had. And if we want to do um, additional sort of uh, diving into that, I'm happy to, to have folks be able to, to provide that information. All right. Uh, Having had three of us speak, I don't know if Commissioner Boyle has, has thoughts, but uh, hearing none, um, I thank Commissioner uh, Feldman for his amendments, and uh, I will move to Commissioner Trumka to see if you have amendments. Ooh, and, I, and I'd like to discuss um, Trumka 3 and Trumka 3A, and I think they, they go together if that's all right. Um, sure. So a, a number of the amendments that I urged are designed to move us forward on robust mandatory safety standards where they're needed. One of the areas uh, where it's ripe is gas stoves. Scientists, researchers, Congress, and the American public have been calling on CPSC to take action to protect consumers from a hidden hazard in their homes, toxic chemicals pouring out of their gas stoves, which appear to be tied to harms ranging from asthma to cognitive decline. And the science on this is robust and mounted. Nitrogen dioxide and fine particulate matter from gas stoves are building up inside consumers' homes at levels even higher than the EPA has established for its domain, out, outdoor air. And we're still, the impacts appear to disproportionately harm the poorest communities. Thankfully, we know that there are alternatives to gas stoves. Not only do new electric stoves appear to be safer, I understand they're also less expensive. In my view, it's time for our agency to address the gas stove hazard now. I propose an amendment for us to issue a notice of proposed rulemaking this year so that we can get comments on a gas stove ban, consider alternatives, and then issue any appropriate rule that keeps Americans safe from this hazard. Yet in talking with my colleagues, I realize that support is currently lacking for an NPR at this time. And we can still move forward here though, perhaps just not as fast as I had hoped. Uh, so while I had offered Trump Amendment 3, I am withdrawing it, and I'm offering Trump Amendment 3A as a substitute under Trump Amendment 3A, we will issue a request for information to gather all available research and data on the scope of the hazard. 
that'll put us on strong footing to move forward on an NPR uh, if and when we get that information back later this fiscal year. So I ask for your support on the amendment. Do you have a second for the amendment? Okay. See a raised hands as a second, and uh, and thank you, Commissioner Boyle. Uh, hearing a second, we'll move to uh, questions and consideration of the amendment. Uh, questions and comments. I recognize myself for uh, five minutes. Um, Commissioner Tronka, this has been an issue that you've been very focused on, and I appreciate that. I appreciate your um, recognition and bringing these uh, really chronic hazards to the attention of the commission and pushing forward. Um, as you said, at this point in time, I don't feel that we're ready to go to an NPR because that would involve really uh, establishing what the standards are and that we need more information. But we are hearing about the potential health risks from gas stoves from many stakeholders. Uh, and you know, while staff is engaged with other stakeholders on, the, on voluntary efforts to address indoor air quality from gas stoves, I see the value of a request for information that would seek input from the public regarding the hazards, potential solutions, and potentially um, how we can address this moving forward. Um, so I am happy to support your amendment. Uh, with that, I turn to Commissioner Feldman. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I appreciate uh, the amendment uh, 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 trunk of three, uh, but uh, Mr. Chairman, as, as you stated, I, I, I do have deep concerns about uh, pursuing this rulemaking at a time accordingly. I'm a uh, a no on on Trunka three. Are we also considering three A at this time? Yes, I believe that he called he offered through three and then asked consideration of three A. Understood. Uh, on three A, it's a bit of a different story, I, and I do want to thank uh, my colleague Commissioner Trumka for uh, for for this amendment. Uh, Trumka three A. Uh, our rulemaking at CPSC should be uh, based on uh, sound data and thorough analysis. As we all like to say, CPSC uh, is or should be, uh, we're not always, uh, a data-driven agency. Uh, this is a request for information, uh, and it would solicit a important feedback from stakeholders. Uh, and for those reasons, uh, I, I do vote yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. Uh, I want to thank my colleague, uh, Commissioner Trump, uh, for raising this issue um, repeatedly and with a strong voice. I fully support this approach. I think we um, have been daunted by our resource constraints when we're talking about chronic hazards. And while that is a reality, uh, we still need to press forward on these issues. And I fully support this um, amendment. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trump, did you have any final thoughts? No. Thank you all for your consideration. Hearing no further questions or comments on this amendment, I want to thank my fellow commissioners for our engagement and ask for a vote. Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes on 3A. Let to be clear as well. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll do a vote on, on amendment 3A. I vote on yes on 3A. Uh, Commissioner Trumpka. That would have been nice if I could have snuck three in there somehow by accident, but I, I also vote yes on 3A. Commissioner Boyle. I vote yes. And I vote yes on 3A. The yeses are four, the noes are zero. The amendment uh, Trumpka 3A is adopted. Uh, Commissioner Trumpka, do you have additional amendment? Uh, just one more. Uh, I call up Trumpka 5. Can you uh, introduce Trumpka 5? Yes. Oh, do you want me to describe it now? Uh, that would that probably help. Okay, so so Trump Group Five directs staff to monitor uh, international consumer product safety and hazardous substance research and rulemakings. Uh, look, I mean, we we talk about this a lot, but CPSC is chronically underfunded, and because of those funding limitations, we need to take every opportunity we can to efficiently use our resources, and to the degree that our priorities align, I think we'd be smart to draw from consumer safety work done in other countries uh, rather than starting from scratch in our analysis. Uh, you know, each time a possible consumer safety hazard comes to light, we should have a finger on the pulse of similar analyses happening abroad. And so this amendment will help us, I think, stretch our shoestring budget a little bit further by seeing what others are doing around the world. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Uh, having heard a second, we move to consideration of this amendment. I recognize myself for five minutes. Um, Commissioner Trumka, I appreciate this amendment. I appreciate the thoughts behind it. I think that um, we can learn from our uh, colleagues overseas as to what they're doing uh, when it comes to product safety. I think in many ways we lead the, the world in product safety and uh, CPSC actually sets the, the standard that other people follow, but I am not so arrogant as to think that we can't learn from, from those abroad as well. So, um, you know, based on my understanding of this amendment and how it's done, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are looking at all the, every work that's being done across the world, which would be impossible, but it's really uh, focused on uh, coordinating with other federal agencies and international partners, um, something that we are, we are doing to some degree, but obviously this highlights it. Um, so, uh, if other countries, you know, have innovative steps for us to take consumers, we should learn from those and be aware of it. So, I am uh, happy to support this amendment. Um, Commissioner Fel uh, Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Trumka, for this amendment. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, but I, I also question whether uh, this is the appropriate time to in include this sort of coordination in our operating plan. Uh, as we've all noted today, CPSC is a uh, resource constrained agency. And, and frankly, I I'm more interested in seeing uh, America lead on safety rather than follow the suit of our foreign counterparts. Um, as my colleague, Commissioner Trumka, noted during the discussion earlier today, about my amendment to coordinate with U.S. antitrust uh, experts. Even he is concerned that uh, this sort of coordination uh, would divert, uh, divert uh, important resources away from uh, other priorities. Uh, if that's a concern on uh, antitrust and anti-competitiveness uh, effects, I think the same principle applies here. Accordingly, I'm a no on uh, Trump to five. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Boyle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do support this amendment. I frankly think it reflects work that is ongoing already by staff. I do think we monitor standards and, and glean information from them. I will also echo what the chair has said. Uh, I do think we are the safety leader and when we do compare our standards to standards around the world, we surely come out on top in most cases. That said, anytime there's information we can use to improve our safety work and build on work that, as I say, I believe staff is already doing, uh, I think that's an important thing to do. So I support this amendment. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Boyle. Commissioner Trumka, do you have any final thoughts? Sure. You know, and, and I, I definitely appreciate and agree with so much of what I heard there. Um, in so many ways, we are the world leader on safety issues. I think one area where we have an opportunity to learn significantly is European chemical regulation. And so hopefully we, we keep a very watchful eye in that space. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hearing no further questions or comments. Um, and ask for the vote at this point in time. Commissioner Feldman. I vote no. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. And I vote yes. The yeses are three, the noes are one. Uh, the amendment Trumka five is adopted. Commissioner Trumka, did you have additional amendments? I do not, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle, you have amendments. I do. I believe I, uh, this is the last amendment uh, of the day, uh, but from my uh, vantage point, it is certainly not the least. Um, and I just would like my amendment has several parts. Uh, I'd like to walk through the technical parts of the amendment and then more importantly, talk about why I'm offering this amendment and why it's such a high priority for me. So just on the technical parts, uh, my amendment focuses on the need for continued baby safety research. Uh, it clarifies the subjects of the rulemakings. It authorizes staff to proceed to a final rulemaking in the case of infant pillows. And finally, the amendment adds an additional bullet to the priority list in order to reflect the importance of implementing congressional direction on battery ingestion. So, as I said at the briefing, when uh, we were talking with staff about priorities, um, my top priority has been and will continue to be a focus on baby and child safety. 
And this amendment reflects that priority and commitment to protecting the most vulnerable. And on continued research on baby safety, especially in the area of infant sleep, that is just vitally important. We need to continue to do more work. So let's be perfectly clear. Lives are at stake. Babies' lives are at stake. And so to the extent that additional funds are available as requested under the FY23 budget, I believe those funds should be used to further infant sleep research, including research on hazards associated with chin to chest scenarios, which we frequently see in cases of infant sleep related deaths. Indeed, just last July, when the American Academy of Pediatrics updated its safety sleep recommendations, lead author Dr. Rachel Moon emphasized the need for continued focus on safe sleep. And she said, we've made great strides in learning what keeps infants sleep safe during sleep, but much work still needs to be done. Let me emphasize that much work needs to be done and we should be spending our dollars supporting that work. Now, let me turn to the part of my amendment related to infant pillows and nursing pillows. Uh, I mentioned at the briefing a couple of weeks ago that I was drafted uh, uh, the language I thought was a bit confusing uh, and I, uh, the language that I've drafted here um, uh, just clarifies that there are differences between infant pillows and nursing pillows um, and that we will be addressing those two separate product categories and separate rulemakings, infant pillows and nursing pillows. Now, nursing pillows are currently unregulated and I support the staff proposal to move forward with the NPR. Infant pillows, on the other hand, were banned two, dec two decades ago, and staff is proposing an NPR related to the scope of that ban. I fully support staff's proposal, which builds on the data analysis and technical review that was authorized in last year's operating plan. But I'm also seeking a change within the mandatory standards table to authorize staff to continue their work this year on a final rule following completion of an NPR. Now, my inclusion of a final rule here is meant to ensure that the work will not artificially stop when the first part of the rulemaking process, the NPR, is completed. With this direction to move to a final rule, staff can continue to work seamlessly on this project as resources allow without having to halt as a result of an artificial framework. This approach makes the OP plan a living document that sets a framework for the projects that are expected to be accomplished, but also allows for organic change and flexibility by authorizing additional work if resources and circumstances allow, so as not to unnecessarily slow rulemaking. It is a paradigm shift in how we look at the operating plan. It will allow rulemaking to proceed at a faster place, pace when possible. We've done it elsewhere in this document with respect to information disclosure, and now in the approved amendment today related to portable generators. And indeed, it is consistent with congressional direction in Reese's law that set the expectation that work of this nature would proceed in one fiscal year. I strongly believe we should adopt this approach with infant pillows today to protect our most vulnerable population. Let me repeat what I've already said. Lives are at stake. Babies' lives are at stake. Baby safety has long been one of the commission's top priorities, and approving this amendment would reaffirm that priority. Indeed, I li I've lived this priority as a proud, longtime member of the CPSC staff, and as a commissioner, I intend to use my voice to pr press for continued progress and for the high expectation we can and should set when it comes to protecting the vulnerable among us. I ask for my colleagues' support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Hearing a second, move to consideration of the amendment uh, and uh, recognize myself for five minutes. Commissioner Boyle, as you have said, you have been focused on uh, infant safety, and I know that priority is reflected in many of the amendments um, that you offered and were included in the manager's package. Uh, and I agree, we need to continue to focus on uh, infant safety. It is one of the largest um, hazard, areas of hazards for the commission. And it's with respect to the research side of things. Uh, my understanding is that there is money in, the, in the, the plan for research that will continue. And if we get more money from Congress, I agree, we should be able to, to put more money into infant research and um, build upon what's already in the operating plan. I think that the concern that I have with the amendment is really about the um, direction to staff with respect to moving to a final rule on um, the infant pillows portion of it. Um, 
part of the operating plan we have is we have two new NPRs. One of them, as you said, uh, is regarding infant uh, pillows. The other one is regarding nursing pillows. Um, that is uh, important work that the commission uh, needs to push forward as quickly as possible. And I do think that even once you get those packages done, um, staff should and will continue working on the next stages of those because, as you said, we're not done till we're done. We're done when we have a final rule out there, and honestly, we're not that done then. Then we move into the enforcement phase as to making sure that those standards are being met and that there aren't harmful products on the marketplace. So I, I appreciate and I um, agree with the, the sentiment of this work needs to continue and move on as quickly as possible. Um, you know, that, that being said, we are both limited in the constraints under what we can do with the current resources and um, what the staff believes we have the ability to uh, to do in terms of moving from this point, a pre NPR stage to a final rule. And, you know, based on my conversations, issuing an NPR and reaching a final rule on infant pillows is beyond what can be done this year. Staff has um, has made clear that given the analysis that needs to be done and uh, the multiple demands that are out there, it's going to take until the following year to, to complete the work and move to a, a final rule. I mean, in the end, we have to be bold. We have to, but we also need to be realistic about what the agency can be done. Um, I won't. I too want this done quickly, and I'm, but I also want to make sure it's done well and it's going to survive any and all challenges to a final rule as well. Uh, but you know, I want to be clear. Uh, I expect staff to continue working on the proceeding even after the NPR has been issued by the commission, um, so that we can move forward as quickly as possible. So I, I sympathize and I agree with your sentiment that this is a living process that has to be done. It has to be done quickly. Um, and if work progresses more quickly than anticipated, or if we get the resources that we are asking from, from Congress, uh, we can and should reassess what can be done. But at this point in time, we need to set the, the, the setting expectations for this, the staff as being what's done through this document and not any expectations, but expectations that are based on um, on what they can do, and what I'm hearing is that it's not doable within this time frame. So uh, I'm torn about this, but I can't support the amendment at this point in time. Um, Commissioner Feldman, uh, thank you, and I want to thank my colleague uh, for this amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman. I uh, appreciate your comments, and and I agree uh, for those reasons. I'm I'm also a no on boil too. Thank you, Commissioner Trumka. Mr. Boyle, thank you for introducing this amendment. Infant pillows are unsafe for sleep. They can kill infants. We on this commission have read the incident reports. Only a firm flat surface is safe for infant sleep. This agency, as you pointed out, determined a long while ago that infant pillows should be banned. When the agency issued the ban, the pillows on the market at that time tended to be filled with a different material than they are today. We're currently considering whether to expand that ban to other pillows that have different filling. We've recently taken legal action to remove certain infant pillows that agency staff alleges pose a substantial product hazard, but we owe certainty to parents and even to industry. And that can come from rulemaking. Much of the work should already be done on this point, and we should be able to move fast. Commissioner Boyle, I share your sense of urgency on this issue. I think you and I are in lockstep on infant safety. I don't believe we have time to waste. We should resolve this issue this year. And so I am a very strong yes on this amendment. Uh, Commissioner Boyle, do you have final comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you to Commissioner Trumka for uh, that strong support. Uh, and just in response to you, Mr. Chair, I, I, I actually think we're in agreement because you said that if work progresses uh, and change circumstances, which we all know can happen, uh, we can reassess. All this does is say that we they're authorized to reassess and move forward as circumstances dictate. So I actually think we are in agreement. And 
I, uh, over my long time at the agency, things that uh, look impossible today frequently turn out to be possible tomorrow. And while I know the corollary is true, uh, where things that look possible turn out to be impossible, I'd like us to uh, focus uh, on the former and say that all this amendment does is authorize staff to proceed to a final rule if circumstances allow. It does not require it. It does not dictate it. It just says this is an urgent priority of the commission, uh, and that is why I am offering it. So I appreciate uh, the comments. I understand scarce resources. Uh, and all this does is say that this is a priority and we should make it a priority if we can, understanding that there uh, are limitations and that if that happens, we will uh, appreciate that from staff, but that at this point we are saying what a priority of the commission is, and that is to make sure that we look at something that's been on the books for 20 years uh, and that the commission long has endorsed. So I appreciate uh, my colleagues and I am. Uh, Look forward to the call of the vote. Thank you, Commissioner Boyle. Um, hearing no additional uh, comments uh, at this point in time, move to vote. Uh, Commissioner Feldman. I vote no. Uh, Commissioner Trumka. Yes. Commissioner Boyle. Yes. Um, I unfortunately get a vote no on this one. I will be willing to reassess in the, the mid year based on what was going on. Uh, but at this point in time, the yeses are two, the noes are two, and the motion to approve Commissioner Boyle's amendments not adopted. Uh, Commissioner Boyle, did you have additional amendments? I do not. Um, hearing no additional amendments, I'm going to move to approve the staff uh, draft fiscal year 2023 operating plan as amended. Is there a second? Second. If second, we can move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle. I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. The yeses are threes and those are one. The motion to approve staff draft fiscal year 2023 operating plan as amended passes. Uh, we're now going to move, uh, sorry, we're now going to have up to 10 minutes per commissioner for any closing remarks, and I'm going to start. Um, so I want to first uh, thank everybody. Thank you for, for, for the engagement discussions on uh, what is um, uh, an extremely important, difficult process for setting forth um, our operating plan, their expectations for um, what the, the staff will do in the coming year. Um, and I look forward to uh, reassessing that based off of what uh, Congress decides is a final level of appropriations, and uh, as we do often in what we call our mid year. Uh, but maybe we'll get our final appropriations faster and then we'll be able to do it quicker. But tomorrow is the 50, uh, 50th anniversary for the CPSC. And I'd like to note that because it's an extremely important and extremely important agency that I'm proud to be part of. We've made a tremendous amount of progress since Congress created our agency in 1972. And that's thanks, a great part, uh, thanks to the, the work of the agency that many hazards that threatened Americans back then don't exist today. And while our safety work has evolved, as consumer product safety hazards have evolved, um, things remain the same. We continue to have a, a mighty vision with a small budget compared to what other federal agencies have. And it's because of the dedication, hard work of staff that we're continuing to be able to make the world a safer place. Uh, just this past year, we conducted more than 200 recalls, assessed more than $38 million in civil penalties when companies uh, failed to comply with our safety laws, removed more than 40,000 dangerous products from e-commerce sites, and screened more than 40,000 uh, harmful shipments coming in at our uh, potentially harmful shipments coming in at our borders. Can we do more? Absolutely. Uh, the, our fiscal year uh, 2023 operating plan that we just approved shows that with additional resources, staff, and funding, we could solve many more safety problems. Despite these limited resources um, and the need to make some very hard decisions, Staff put forward an aggressive and uh, ambitious plan, and through that, we're going to be engaging in 
27 rulemaking activities, at least 86 voluntary standards activities, uh, publishing 13 hazard classification reports, enforcing four new mandatory safety standards and moving forward with our uh, filing um, pilot project, de minimis import safety work. So I'm excited, excited about our work plan for this fiscal year. Uh, we passed a number of amendments today that have pushed a really aggressive plan even further into that end. I want to say consumers uh, know that we're going to use every resource we have to move the ball forward on safety and to arm you with safety information you need to keep your, yourself and your loved ones safe to uh, CPSC's product safety community. And now that we want to partner with you to improve safety through efforts like voluntary standards and voluntary recalls, and training, but when safety is not advanced, we will use our authorities and resources to move mandatory standards and recalls forward. And finally, the CPSC staff, I want you to know that uh, we're proud of you and proud of your work and the, what you've accomplished so far. None of our safety work happens without you. Uh, and yes, this, this plan is ambitious, but together we can do it and improve safety in the lives for all Americans. So I wanna thank the staff for their hard work in putting this package together. I wanna to thank my fellow commissioners and their staffs for their amendments and for the support of the plan. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing our safety work and laying the foundation for the next 50 years of safer products. Uh, that, Commissioner Feldman, do you have a statement? I do, Mr. Chairman. And I, I wanna thank you uh, in, in particular and, and also extend a, a, a warm word of thanks to uh, my colleagues and to agency staff for everyone's hard work on this operating plan. Uh, this has been a highly collaborative effort with a, a lot of give and take. Uh, not everyone got everything that they wanted in the final plan, uh, but the final plan, uh, as I understand it, uh, includes at least some of every commissioner's priorities. Uh, and that's a sign, uh, frankly, of a well-functioning agency and uh, a welcome departure from how we've handled these operating plans in the past. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, is in large part uh, due directly to your leadership. Uh, and I wanna thank you and I wanna thank my colleagues. Uh, it's, I was ultimately a uh, no on this plan for reasons that I've stated previously. Uh, I believe that we should have begun this process uh, working within a framework that better reflects uh, the current fiscal reality in which we find ourselves. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I look forward to working with you, Mr. Chairman, and my colleagues and agency staff uh, to implement this plan in the coming fiscal year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. Thank you. Uh, with the inclusion of our amendments, this operating plan now moves our agency farther and faster than ever uh, in its mission to protect people from dangerous products. My driving purpose as a consumer safety advocate is to get hidden hazards out of American homes. To do so, it's imperative that we devote as much time, energy, and resources as possible to regulating chronic hazards. In adopting my amendment to start work on gas stove safety, CPSC will be at the forefront of addressing what appears to be a very serious safety hazard that has stayed hidden for a long time. I'm also heartened that we're taking on the fire safety of side-by-sides this year. Of all the products in our jurisdiction, off-road vehicles like side-by-sides and ATVs rank as number one in terms of injuries and deaths. There's an urgent need for our attention and for real progress, which we've achieved in this plan. I'm confident that we're gonna prevent side-by-sides from catching fire without warning and burning passengers through our staff's hard work uh, on the challenges that lie ahead. And getting portable generator regulation to the finish line this year will be a, make a huge difference. We see so many unnecessary deaths from those products in heartbreaking situations. And I look forward to a day when we don't have to warn people who are just hit by hurricanes or winter storms about the danger of running these machines uh, to, to keep themselves warm or, or to keep lights on. The hardest part of developing and refining this operating plan was being forced to choose among so many priority projects. But that process brings into focus just how much critical work this agency is doing. Every single CPSC is, uh, employee is contributing to that work and every hour of your time matters. The amendment to recalibrate how we measure success with voluntary standards will work not only to celebrate staff successes there, but it will also train our focus on making the most productive use of staff's time. I'm also very happy that we'll be streamlining staff's consideration of criminal referrals for the most egregious corporate wrongdoing. 
every time we decide to issue a civil penalty, we're also going to be assessing whether to make a criminal referral to the Department of Justice. I think we will see more criminal referrals for egregious corporate conduct than ever before. Making an example out of the worst offenders will send a strong message to corporate boardrooms. We will not tolerate recklessness when it comes to safety. If you put profits over people's lives, you will pay with your freedom. Maybe a CEO can write off a fine as the cost of doing business. Prison time changes that calculus. Lastly, it's not often in today's climate that you see the level of cross-party collaboration required to reach consensus on so many truly pressing consumer safety issues. But with the help of our hardworking staff and the leadership of our chair and these commissioners, we reached an agreement that will squeeze every drop out of our limited resources and do right by American consumers. This is about to be a very good year for safety. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and of course, I too want to thank the staff for all of their hard work, not just in putting this document together, but in the professional and expert execution I know will be underway in implement, implementing the path we've set today in the operating plan. You know, I also want to thank my colleagues for working with me and my staff on developing amendments to the, the plan. I really appreciate your support and your thoughtful input. We'll have a longer written statement, but for now, I just want to highlight a few points. Uh, I believe the operating plan should reflect our priorities, and I, I think the amended document does reflect my priority to protect vulnerable populations. It also reflects my priorities with respect to chronic hazards. We must keep those front and center, even in the face of limited resources. And on that score, I'm particularly pleased that we'll be working to address PFAS and gas stoves. Finally, I want to emphasize my belief that we should approach the operating plan as a living document through which we authorize staff to proceed at an accelerated pace on projects and rulemakings as circumstances and resources allow. As I said already, uh, this would be a paradigm shift in how we approach the plan, but rulemaking in particular does not, uh, is not uh, a static exercise that should be bound by artificial parameters of a fiscal year. I'm happy that we've begun to use that approach in this operating plan on information disclosure and portable generators. And I look forward to using such a flexible approach in the future so that we can respond more nimbly to circumstances and the, as the availability, availability of resources uh, uh, allows. And so again, thank you to everyone involved in this process. Uh, I look forward to uh, implementing uh, this plan in, in the year ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Boyle, and thanks to, again to all the, the staff for their hard work and for the efforts of my fellow commissioners. Uh, this concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission.